Welcome back. Thank you for checking out this bonus edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm 12 Kyle. Check this out. The other day I was, uh, (laughs) I was having a conversation with my son Cameron at the time of this recording. Cameron's 20 years old, right? So he's, you know, seen a lot of different things in his, uh, 20 years on this earth. And one of the things that I love about Cameron, uh, of all my children, he's the one that will ask a lot of questions. And he's the one who's probably going to be the first to ask, well, you know, how was it back when you were growing up? How was it, you know, in the 90s? Or he, you know, sometimes he'll, <laughs> he'll jokingly say, well, hey, dad, this ain't the 80s no more. So um, he reminds me of how old I really am. But on this particular day, we were having a conversation and somehow we got on the subject of celebrities. And what I mean by celebrities, like celebrities, athletes, entertainers, Hollywood stars, whatever you want to call it. I think all of that, you know, can fall under the category of celebrity. And he simply asked me, say, hey, dad, how would you act if you were around a celebrity? <laughs> I chuckled because like I've been around celebrities. I've been around athletes. I've been around famous people before. Um, and I'm always amazed at how some people, not everybody, some people react. And I and I. I I explained to him like it was your interactions with a celebrity or athlete or star, you know, when I was coming up is different from how it is now. Um, And I'll touch on that in just a second. Uh, But my initial thought was I I told him, like, if I'm if I was in the same room with a celebrity, a famous athlete, a Hollywood star. I'd probably act like I didn't see him. <laughs> That's just me. And the reason why I say that is like, and I'll give you an example. Like, let's use Jay-Z for an example. Um, let's use Jay-Z and Michael Jordan. Jay-Z is one of my favorite rappers of all time. I think he's one of the greatest rappers of all time. Um... I, if I were in the same room with Jay-Z, I probably would act act like I didn't see him. Because here's the thing. I think, you know, sometimes, especially when you're of my era, and a lot of you are who listen to this podcast, you know, you don't really bug on seeing somebody. You don't bug out when you see somebody famous. And, I, and, and maybe I operate in this space because of who I am and how old I am. Or maybe I operate in this space because I've seen people really just flip out in seeing a celebrity. And I always thought that was kind of weird, you know, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're a famous athlete. It doesn't matter if you're a famous movie star or singer or Hollywood star. You, you know, you bleed. You, you, you have blood that runs through your veins and you put your pants on one leg at a time like everybody else, like I do. <laughs> um, but if I were in the same room with Jay-Z, yeah, I probably wouldn't say anything. And, I, and, I, and it's not to say that I would be in awe because I don't, I'm not in awe of people like that. But, you know, just kind of coming up in the air in which I can. Now, if he said something to me, I would say something back to him and I may or may not even acknowledge the fact that he's Sean Corey Carter (laughs) hell I might call him Sean nah but seriously I I don't I I just I've never been on celebrities like that um I think the little that I know of Jay-Z I think he's probably approachable if you wanted to have a conversation with him if you could get close to him I don't know I mean guys got probably 
seven feet bodyguards. I don't know. But let's just say we're just in a social setting and we're in the same room. Could I get and I could get to Jay-Z and Jay-Z could get to 12 Kyle. You know, will we have a conversation if he initiated it? Yeah, probably. But I'm not walking up to Jay-Z and having a conversation. I mean, honestly, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not walking up to a lot of people to have conversations. But, you know, in a social setting, probably not. Um, and that's not to say that, again, that I don't think he's approachable. But I, I think it's 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 a it can be a slippery slope when you're talking about, you know, meeting your quote unquote heroes. Now, I wouldn't call Jay-Z a hero of mine because he's not Muhammad Ali, but <laughs> you get my point. And I think we came from an era where we put these celebrities and rap stars and movie stars on such a high pedestal, but I also came from an era where we didn't really know that much about them. You see, for most of Jay-Z's career, I, I, I didn't. I mean, I, you, you knew the basics. You knew he was from Marcy. You knew he uh, used to sell drugs and he became a famous rapper. You might know a little bit about his family life, you know, that he had an older brother and I think two older sisters, a mom. He was the baby of the family. You know, you really didn't get too much into people's personalities or, or you know, their background because we just that information wasn't readily available. You know, fast forward to 2022, you know, I could go on Instagram and see what Jay-Z ate for breakfast if he so chose to share it with me. Um, but no, nah, I'm I'm not I'm not approaching Jay-Z in a social setting. Um, Michael Jordan. Anybody knows me. <laughs> if you know me, I think that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player that I've ever seen play with my own two eyes, not film. Not, you know, guys that came before him, you know, because I only saw Bill Russell and those guys on film. I didn't see him play live, but live is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And there's no bigger fan than of me than, you know, I'm Jordan's biggest fan. And I unequivocally say this. If I were in a room with Michael Jordan and it was me, you, and Michael Jordan in the room, I probably wouldn't say anything to Michael Jordan. <laughs> I'd let you talk to him. Um, Jordan, from what I know and from what I've heard, you know, be somewhat of an asshole. I mean, we saw that in the documentary of The Last Dance. Very competitive, very hard on his teammates, and rightfully so. He wants the best, and he's very competitive. But, you know, so am I. And I'm just not walking up to Michael Jordan and having a conversation. Again, if we're in the room and he sees me, he's like, hey, that looks like 12 Kyle over there. Let me go over and say, what's up? I'll dap him up. What up, Mike? You know, give him a pound and we'll, you know, maybe we'll have a conversation. Maybe we won't. I would acknowledge if he, you know, if a conversation was struck up, I would say, hey, man, big fan of what you did. Huge fan. Appreciate you. And that's about it. I'm not... <laughs> running up on Mike and asking him, you know, did he push off Byron Russell in game <laughs> game six against Utah? Um, he didn't, but that's another story for another day. But no, I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, one of the reasons why I think you, you don't really approach celebrities or movie stars or rappers, you never know how people's days are going, right? And I get it from a fan's perspective. If I'm in a room with Michael Jordan or if I'm in a room with, you know, Jay-Z, that may be the only time that I get a chance to say hello, shake a hand, take a picture, ask for an autograph. That might be it. I mean, depending on who you are and what circles you run in, you may never get that opportunity again. Right. So I get that some people with that on the line, we'll do whatever to, you know, <laughs> say something or whatever. Me, I'm just not wired that way. And again, I think it may have something to do with just because of who I am. And it also may have something to do with the era in which I came up in. Um, but yeah, I'm not, while I, I, I can admire a celebrity from afar, 
and just let it be what it is. Uh, if you notice the cover art of this particular episode, you see a young lady and you see the late Chadwick Bozeman. Um, the young lady, and I want to make sure I get her information correctly. She was, I'm assuming like on the red carpet or something, her twist, she posted this tweet. It was her Twitter handle, uh, at Deja underscore diva. Um, and the tweet reads Chadwick Boseman. He came up to me and said, you're so beautiful. Can we take a picture? And subsequently, she took a selfie with Chadwick Boseman. Now, at the time, Chadwick Boseman is a huge movie star. And this is just, I don't know who Deja Diva is. But she's a very pretty young lady with a pretty smile. And they take a selfie together. And Chadwick Boseman at this particular time is clearly a movie star. I don't know if he had done Black Panther yet, but he was probably up on it. And of course, we unfortunately lost Chadwick a few years ago but I wanted to use that as the cover because this was her one opportunity probably in her lifetime to get a picture with this famous celebrity and interestingly enough he came to her and said hey you are so beautiful let's take a picture and that was dope and that kind of speaks to the person that Chadwick Boseman was. Me, on the other hand, I probably would have gave him dap and I probably would have kept walking. <laughs> but you, you, the thing about, you know, being around celebrities is that you don't know how they're going to be on that particular day that you meet them or that you come across them. They could be it could be one of the best days of their lives. It could be one of the worst days of their lives. Uh, the thing that I do know about celebrities is that, you know, they understand. Well, not all of them, but quite a few of them understand that they have to be, quote unquote, on once they leave the house. Meaning that. You know, everything and everybody is going to want to speak or an autograph or picture or they're going to want to talk to them. And you have to carry yourself in a certain way or at least you should carry yourself in a certain way some people honestly don't and if we're being honest some celebrities some entertainers some movie stars some athletes can be straight up and down assholes <laughs> and in them being assholes how they deal with the public Case in point, Barry Bonds, famous baseball player, home run king, um, alleged <laughs> steroid user, <laughs> alleged he was never caught. Um, Barry Bonds notoriously is known for being an asshole. I mean, Bonds was an asshole to the media. He was an asshole to some of his teammates on a day to day basis. So what do I look like walking up to Barry Bonds, asking him for an autograph or saying hello? He's probably going to say something crazy. And me being the person that I am, I'm not going to let you talk greasy to me. I'm probably going to say something crazy, too. Now we've got a problem. <laughs> and that's not to say that I'm going to fight Barry Bonds. I ain't fighting nobody. But. I'm not going to let Barry Bonds talk to me sideways. Same for um, Kareem Abdul, De, De, uh, getting tongue tied. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, the famous basketball player. I've heard so many stories, particularly after his playing, well, during his playing career and some after his playing career. I say Kareem was an asshole too, very aloof, wasn't really close with his teammates like that. And there's some documentation out there that can support that. But Kareem, and I don't know, I mean, this it's, guy's seven feet tall and he's a basketball, famous basketball player. I mean, like, not a lot of those walking around this earth. So maybe you feel like people can't compare to you. Maybe you feel like people aren't on your level. I don't know. 
But no, I wouldn't ask Kareem. In fact, I do know someone who in the 80s saw Kareem and he wasn't around a lot of people. They walked up to him and asked him for an autograph. And Kareem looked at him and said, hell no, you ain't getting an autograph. (laughs) And this comes from a very reliable source. Family member. Um, So, yeah. I mean, could it have been that he just had a bad day? I don't know. But that memory of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will last forever. Didn't matter how many how many points he scored, how many times he won championships, how many MVPs he won. That's all they will ever remember. You being an asshole. Same goes for um, what's my man name? Uh, Warren Sapp, football player, used to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Warren Sapp is a known asshole and dickhead. I know at least four people whom I'm very close to that had four separate interactions with Warren Sapp and they all were bad. And one encounter was from a friend, a family member who said he was on the train with Warren Sapp and he just happened to look at Warren Sapp and they happened to make eye contact. And Warren Sapp looked at him and said, what the fuck are you looking at? Do you want me to come over there and slap the shit out of you? Okay. (laughs) No word, no other words were exchanged. Just an asshole, man. So when you have situations like that, you don't want to deal with people. And I'm sure that there are probably other celebrities and entertainers that we could talk about who have had similar interactions with people. I'm just giving you just a few that I know. And it doesn't have to be like that, honestly. If you don't want to sign an autograph, okay, cool. If you don't want to take a picture, okay, cool. There's a way that you can communicate that to people and keep it moving. No, I understand somebody like Jay-Z can't stand on is can't walk through Times Square and start signing autographs. I understand that because if he does, he'll be there all day, literally. But at the same time, there's a way that you can handle it, handle yourself. Um, I remember growing up, uh, as many of you know, maybe some of you don't know, uh, my uncle played football for the New York football giants in the NFL, played for 13 years. He's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. His name is Harry Carson, right? And my uncle is very, very recognizable, particularly in the metropolitan New York area, right? So I remember I couldn't have been maybe about 10 or 11. We went to this pizza place. And, you know, it's just me, him, my cousins. And that was it, and my brother. And so, you know, it's him and a bunch of kids, basically. And I distinctly remember, like, we were sitting eating pizza and we we're talking as a family. And keep in mind now, because my uncle played football, I didn't get a chance to see him that much. I mean, outside of TV, but I didn't get a chance to hang with him and kick it. And so this is one time where I'm actually just, I mean, just imagine going to grab some pizza with your uncle. And there were literally seven people waiting in line to like come over to talk, talk to him at our table. And one guy walks up and he says, Excuse me, excuse me, sir. I, I hate bother you. He's like, are you Harry Carson? I mean, which is funny because people always ask that. But I'm like, you can look at him. And tell. I mean, I granted this was this was the 80s. So there were no cell phones. So the guy says, hey, are you Harry Carson? Can I, you know, is it OK? Are, are you OK? Is that you? And he's like, yes, I'm Harry Carson. He's like, oh, man, I'm one of your biggest fans. I love the Giants, blah, 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 blah. Would you mind signing an autograph? And he said, sure, if you don't mind waiting after I finish eating, I'll, I'll sign an autograph. And then there were like six other people like, yeah, yeah, okay, can you get one too? Can I get one too? He was like, if you don't mind waiting, he's like, I'm eating with my family. He's like, after we finish eating, sure, no problem. And he did. And he handled it very, very well. I mean, like, it got me to thinking. Again, I'm like 10, maybe 11 years old. I'm thinking like, yo, that's got to be annoying as hell. Like I'm sitting there trying to eat. Like I, I want to eat in peace. Right. (laughs) 
I don't want nobody coming by and talking to me while I'm eating. You know, sometimes I don't even want to talk to the people sitting around me or at a table near me or something like that. So, but to have that level of calm about yourself, level of professionalism, it's always interesting because like in my travels, like somehow we get on the subject and if someone, we start talking football and I tell them about my uncle anybody that's had an interaction with him they always have this the like the best stories they would be like yo man i saw harry carson he was at the mall and he signed my my t-shirt and he was so nice and so generous and i'm like you know wow and and i'm not surprised because that's just really the type of person he is but you know when you contrast that with his former teammate and good friend lawrence taylor who was arguably the greatest defensive player to ever play in the nfl vastly different <laughs> uh, if you met Lawrence Taylor and I've met Lawrence Taylor before cool guy um, but it's you know quite known Lawrence Taylor and LT two different people you could kick it with Lawrence Taylor you don't want to kick it with LT <laughs> and I'll leave it at that but I've only met Lawrence Taylor a couple of times and Lawrence Taylor I've met L- Lawrence Taylor, never met LT. There's a difference. Um, but I just, you know, even seeing my uncle with those interactions, I'm like, damn, like, who would want to deal with that? And then I remember, um, I can't re- I think it was Michael Jordan's video called Come Fly With Me. And this was at the height of Jordan's, you know, popularity before he won a ring, Right. And Jordan said something in an interview that on that tape that made me kind of, it always kind of made me stop and pause. His celebrity had gotten so big. He said, like, I would be perfectly happy if I walked down the street and nobody said anything to me. And I was like, damn, I mean, like, you're Michael Jordan. You're the most, at this time, he is the biggest star in the world. Like there was probably nobody more popular than Michael Jordan at the time. My, Michael Jordan, at that time, he was just out of here. I mean, like he was bigger than jo- he was bigger than Michael Jackson, he's bigger than Prince, he's bigger than everybody. He was a global icon, and he said, "I would love to just walk down the street, and if nobody said anything to me, I would be perfectly fine." And there's a part of me that probably feels that Jordan probably still feels like that. Like he doesn't want to be bothered. Not that he's annoyed when he's bothered, but he would rather not be seen. But it's kind of hard to miss a tall, bald headed black guy to six foot six. (laughs) I mean, somebody like me, he's five, seven. I'm not going to stick out like a sore thumb. He is. I can go to the mall and nobody not know who I am because they're not supposed to. But maybe one day, you know, maybe one day I'll go to the mall. And say, hey, ain't that ain't, ain't that 12 Kyle right there? <laughs> that would be scary and dope at the same time. But I digress. But no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to live that kind of life. I wouldn't want to live that kind of life in a fishbowl. And that was the 80s and the 90s. And you fast forward to the two to, to the 2000s. With the advent of technology. Now you've got cell phones. And people nowadays just record. I mean, I mentioned getting an autograph earlier. Do people even get autographs now? (laughs) I don't think that they do. I think, you know, the autograph in the 80s and 90s is today's selfie. Just like uh, this young lady took with uh, Chadwick Boseman. It's the selfie. And then it's also the recording of people, not even asking them if they want. Like, I would never record somebody and not ask them if they want to be recorded. I don't even like recording anything, let alone asking somebody. You're not even asking somebody if they're going to if you want if it's okay with them that you can record them. And that was the, the pushback question that I had for Cameron. I said, well, hey, if you saw your favorite celebrity or your favorite athlete 
or your favorite rapper or your favorite movie star if you saw him on the street i said would you just walk up to him and just start recording and he was like he thought about it for a second he was like i probably wouldn't but then his brother dion who's 23 said i probably record him i'm like why <laughs> And I got low key offended. I was like, I didn't raise y'all to just start recording people. And he's like, well, dad, you know, that's, that might be the only time I get a chance to see him. I said, but Dion, you're, you're invading their privacy at this point. Would you want somebody to just record you? It's like, no. And it's funny because like, I, I thought about it when we were, um, my wife and I, we went to um, Mexico a couple of months ago. And when we, when we were in the airport, we were going through security and then they had like this little side thing for security. We went through TSA. We were putting our bags on the little thing. We we're about to go through security. They had this little thing on the side where people can come through, I guess, if you had like a handicap or whatever. But I also noticed that it's probably something for celebrities. And so we're standing there. We caught our early flight. Our flight left at like seven or something like that. Um, no, it was like eight. So anyway, we're going through the airport and I, I look to my left and my wife kind of elbows me and she, she whispers, she's like, that's Candy Burris. And I'm like, who? <laughs> she's like, look, that's Candy Burris. Candy Burris from the R&B group Escape from one of those reality shows. I don't know which one. <laughs> reality show she's on i'm sure somebody will tell me but anyway candy burrs and she was walking through she went through the little side thing the little celebrity thing for you know security tsa and it was her and her husband and you know she had on shades and he had on shades and i'm like eh, i know that you probably don't want people to recognize who you are but i mean come on bros 7 30 in the morning on a Sunday, who's recognizing you in the airport? But hey, you know, I understand. But I mean, even like that, like I would not walk up to them and just start recording or say, hey, can I take a selfie with you? Why? They're trying to catch a plane just like I am. You know, they're in the airport handling business just like I am. I'm probably not doing that. In fact, had my wife not even pointed them out, I would have never guessed that they were there because they, they may have been, I don't know, five, ten feet away. You know, personally, I couldn't go through the little uh, side TSA thing. <laughs> Maybe one day. But I don't know. I mean, like I said, things have changed and, you know, people don't even ask. I've seen people literally you see a celebrity on the street and they pull out their phones and they just start recording. And I'm like, why? I've even seen people walk alongside the celebrity filming themselves with the celebrity while the celebrity's not even paying. I mean, like, no, I couldn't do it. So all in all, I mean, you know, I told Cameron, you know, personally, I would never ask anybody for an autograph. I would never ask anybody for a selfie. I would never ask to film somebody. That's just me. I don't, I don't get down like that. I could be in a room with Beyonce and I, I'm i not. I mean, unless she says something to me, I'm probably not even going to acknowledge that she's there. I remember being at and I think I talked about this on the pot on this podcast. I can't remember. But, but I remember. Uh being at this house party and it was it was actually a super bowl party super bowl party that i got invited to from a friend of mine who was a friend of the host and the host um uh, played in the nfl big house big parties in metro atlanta right so i might be the only and as i scanned the room it was like 300 women probably like 75 guys a bunch of nfl dudes a couple of nba dudes i might have been the only regular person <laughs> in there right so t boss from tlc was there uh chili from tlc was there she was looking good too i think she was dating usher at the time and i remember like later on in the evening jermaine dupree came in 
and he walked in and it's it kind of funny because there was a pool table by the door and i was at the pool table you know shooting one of my boys and when he walked in he walked in like hey i'm here <laughs> and i was like i just kind of looked at him like man if you don't go sit your short ass down somewhere because <laughs> he's really should sure. like jermaine debris like 4 11. like when he walked past me i was like i felt like shaq and i'm five seven right so um and, and for those of you no i'm i'm not a fan of jermaine Dupree. he's a talented guy but i'm not a fan of him at all so anyway it was just the way that he came in the room like hey i'm here like you like he wanted people to sweat him and it's like nah man i mean this is this ain't a concert this is a super bowl party there's a lot of women here why don't you walk your little short ass over there and talk to one you know um but nah i i I think you know sometimes people get a little bit beside themselves um with their celebrity you know again i think you know people i understand why you would want to take a picture i understand why cameron would want to take a picture or why he would want um an autograph or want to say something to a celebrity but you know it just ain't in me sorry Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. 5,000.